In this video, I want to introduce the CMOS NAND gate and the CMOS NOR gate. But let's first review some simple logic. Let's review AND logic and OR logic. At the left, I have a, a voltage B and I have a switch that I'll call switch A and I have a switch B and I have a light bulb and if this voltage B is attached to the light bulb it'll light up. Over on the right side I have an OR structure let's call this switch A and switch B. So AND logic means that I have to close this switch and this switch for the bulb to light up. Now OR logic means that I can close this switch or this switch and have the bulb light up. So in this case the AND required both switches to be closed for the event to happen. In the OR logic it only required one switch to be closed for the event to happen. So in electronics we have some symbols for the AND logic and the OR logic. The symbol for the AND logic is this. Where this is say input A and input B and output. Now the OR logic symbol is slightly different. It has a curve as input, we call this input A in our example, input B, and it has an output. So we can think of this, we can think of a, say a light bulb at this output tied to ground. So if the A input is at a logic one and the B input is at a logic one, then only in that situation will the output be a logic one and we'll apply a voltage and our light will shine. In the OR gate, let's also assume we have a, a light bulb attached to the output. Here's the filament tied to ground. Now in this case, if either input is at a one, if this is at a one, doesn't matter what A is doing, if B is at a one, the output will be at a 1 and the light will shine. So in CMOS we can generate the AND function and we can generate the OR function. But it's more simple to generate what we call the NAND function and the NOR function. It requires less transistors to generate those functions. So let's, let's consider what a, what a NAND function is. If we take this AND function with our input A and our input B and we add an inverter to the output. We end up with what is called a, a NAND gate. Now to make a NOR gate we do a similar thing with the OR symbol. We take the A input, B input. Now the output, again we add an inverter. We invert the output signal and this is called a NOR gate. Now this is a rather complex symbol. So in reality we can simplify this symbol and we'll just put a bubble. Rather than drawing the entire inverter here, we'll just put a bubble. And now this becomes a conventional NAND gate symbol. This is input A, 
input B and output. So this means not an. So nan means not an, and this is the not symbol. And this part is the and gate. So in a similar way with the nor gate, we can simplify this symbol. This is the A input, B input, and we'll show the inverter as just a bubble with an output. And this is called the nor gate, meaning not or. So this is the or part and this little bubble is the not in the not or. So if we, for example, have this A at a logic one and the B at a logic one, the, the output of the AND gate will be at a logic one, but the output of the NAND gate will be at a logic zero. So it requires both the A input and the B input being at a logic one to make the output a zero. Any other condition will cause the output to go to a one. Now in the NOR gate, if we have a, a zero at this input and a zero at this input, we have a, a zero at the output of the OR part or one at the output of the NOR. And if either the A input or the B input goes to a one, the output will go to a zero. So let's see how we can construct the NAND gate and the NOR gate using the CMOS technology. Let's first construct a CMOS NAND gate. Let's say that we have a power supply, and let's set the power supply to 2 volts. And let's draw a p-channel transistor. And another p-channel transistor. Let's connect the p-channels in parallel and connect end channels in series to ground. Now let's label this input input A and this gate of the PFET will label input B and let's connect input A to this end FET and the input B to this end fit. And let's label this our output. So this is the CMOS NAND gate. The unique condition occurs when both the end fits are on. So if we have a logic one at A and a logic one at B, both end fits are on and are resistive, and they pull the output down to ground. So the output becomes a zero. And if both inputs are one, the both PMOSs are turned off. Now let's construct the CMOS NOR gate. So again, let's say this is our power supply, and it can be 2 volts. We'll connect our PMOS transistors in series. And let's connect our NMOS or our 
and channel transistors in parallel. So let's call this input A, input B. Let's connect input A to the gate of the NFET and input B to the gate of this other NFET. And let's label this our output node. The unique condition here is when both PFET transistors are in the on condition. So if this A input is at a zero, and the B input is at a zero, both the PMOS transistors form resistive elements. The output is connected as a logic one. It, it's connected up to the power supply. Now that means that we have a zero at this A input and a zero at this B input, which means this NFET transistor is off and this is off. So that allows the output to go to the logic one. Now any other condition on the input, for example, if the if this A signal is at a logic one, this transistor is then on, and if A is at a logic one, this PMOS is out of the picture, he's off, and our output is then at zero volts, or a logic zero. So let me label this as the CMOS NOR gate. So far in my example, I've shown two input NAND gates and NOR gates. So this shows how we can make a four input NAND gate. It's very simple. We just add more series transistors and more parallel transistors. If we want to make a four input NOR gate, we would add four series PFETs and four parallel NFETs. So it would be very similar. So let's consider what we can do with the NAND gate and the NOR gate. So here's a simple circuit using two, two input NAND gates. Now this is called a set reset latch. And let me label this input not set and this input not reset. Now not set and not reset are normally at a logic one level. And I'll draw this as a logic one. And not reset will normally be at a logic one level. And in that situation, these NAND gates act like inverters. So the top NAND gate acts like an inverter. The bottom NAND gate acts like an inverter where this output connects to the input. And this output connects to the input of the other inverter. So this is just a memory element. You'll recall this from previous videos. If this is a zero, the zero here, we produce a one and a one feeds back and locks in the zero here. So if both not set and not reset are at a logic one, this behaves as a storage element. So let's see what happens if I bring the not set at some time to a, a zero level. And when this goes to a zero, this will be zero. And this will be forced to a logic one. Doesn't matter what the other input's doing. A zero on a NAND gate always forces the output to a logic one. And since the not reset is at a logic one, this logic one becomes inverted, becomes a zero, and that zero reinforces the logic one at the Q output. So when not set goes to zero, I set the Q to a logic one. Now, let's say that I've set Q to a logic one. I've dropped 
not set to a logic zero. Now at a later time, I want to drop not reset to a zero. So when this becomes a zero, this is a zero, that forces this to a one. And a one here and a one at the not reset forces to be a zero. And a zero comes along and reinforces this one. So the not reset sets the Q to a zero level when it goes low. So this is a nice little circuit for storing information. So why don't I give you a, a homework problem, a, a simple homework problem. Why don't you make the set reset latch, instead of using two imp input NAND gates, use two input NOR gates. So put the video on pause and see if you can figure that out. Then come back and I'll give you the solution. Okay, so I assume you've given it a shot. And let's do this set reset latch using NOR gates. So let's make this a two input NOR gate. And like the NAND gate, let's draw another NOR gate down here. Let's connect this output to this input. Connect this output over to this other input. And let's change this to reset. And this we'll call set. And let's label this as Q and not Q. So this is very similar to the NAND case, except the, the reset and the set signals are normally at a logic zero level. The set is at a logic zero level. So when the reset goes to a logic one, that forces this to a zero, and the set being a zero forces this to a one. And that one reinforces the, the zero. So the reset sets the Q to a logic zero. And in a similar way, when the set goes high, let's say at a different time here, set going to a one forces this to a zero. This being a zero here and a zero here forces this to a one that reinforces the zero. So the set signal sets the output Q at a logic one. So it's very similar to the NAND gate case, except the input polarities are, are inverted on the, on the set and the reset inputs.